Hey, what is up, viewers? My name is King. Welcome back to another episode of Seven. Thank you guys once again for the awesome support on the series. If you guys missed out on the last episode, check it out. Link will be in the description below. It was a giant plot twist. And with that said, let's read this giant uh, paragraph in this amphitheater. This room was nothing like the ones you've stepped into before. It looked nearly like uh, what? It looks nearly like a small a stone amphitheater. Look at that! I was right. I know my Greek. Uh, theater, theater, theatrics. There we go. Uh, but there was grass growing inside this, uh, the rocky walls. This green rolling and growing along the edges, alongside the edges of the stone seats. They create steps that lead to a large pair of doors. They, there she sat at the top door, a dark form, a dark form where her edges flickered depending on how the lights danced against the walls. That was a great description. Let's see who who this is. Um, I believe her name is Amon. Amon. Oh, there you go. Your voice sounds hollow. You have come so far, but the memories of her past no longer drive you forward. You feel a void in your heart where the, where, where there had once been passion. Why was Rose Rose unfaithful to you? What did you, that man have that you did not? I don't know. He would pay. You would make him pay. Did you already make him pay? You are correct. You know who I am. But do you also know what memory I have for you? One of Is death. it painful? No, it is not painful. The words from a mouth are calm, and frighteningly so. The memory I have for you nope. is yep. one of vengeance. Of anger! Of anger! Of wrath! Of wrath. Why did you calm down, man? Come on, really? Perhaps you had already done what you just promised yourself. Perhaps when you return, Rose will have already returned to you. You calm, waking uh, to an apologetic and loving Rose. You have come so far in your journey. The memory that I have for you does not resolve any of the questions that you may have in your mind. Oh. Never mind then. This piece of your past that I hold has no answers. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. It is important for you it to see it. It is important for you to see it. Her figure seems to languish upon the stone from where she sat. I don't have a choice? I don't know why I said for, I added from there. Anyway, let's continue. Did you ever have a choice in the first place? The dark figure shimmered. Everything hmm. that has led you here. Was it really oh, all don't, by don't your fucking choice. Stanley Peril on my ass, dude. Really? Get out of here. You Did you really make the choices you made, or you was it all me? Made. God damn it. No, there was no way. Clearly, I would, if, I, if I had the choice, I would have made the Fibonacci sequence correctly, and I would have said, uh, what was it, eight? Eight? See, it, even if... Uh, never, I'm not even, even going to go back down that, down that path. You know what? I'm not even going to make, make that path. Okay. I... Amon the Wrathful. Understand how you feel at this moment. You are full of anger. Yes. And resentment towards yes. your family. F your toward my family? Even yourself. You are fearful of what this memory may bring. So, I will make this swift. Will make this swift. Okay. Come to me, Chance. Say it again. That was very seductive. You take the stairs to a seat, the room begins to glow dim, oh, to grow dim, and you feel the sensation of the vision take hold. Oh, a cock -hawk. You feel anger take hold in every bone in your body, the anger that had begun to take hold that morning in the coffee shop, you nurtured into, what? You nurtured it into focused rage, creating a plan. You began watching the man when you weren't spending time. What? No, you began watching the man when you weren't spending time with Rose or your friends or family or friends. You would follow him and create a schedule of his weekly activities. You monitored him for an entire month, all the time deciding what you would say to him. In the meantime, you rarely saw Rose. You see, uh, just seeing her turned and twisted your. Oh, just seeing her turn, turned and twisted your tummy because she was the same sweet, caring, gentle spirit as always. Your sweet Rose. He must have done something to her uh, to trick her into seeing him, meeting him, touching that creature. 
those thoughts only fuel their quiet rage. You found her. You found the perfect moment in his schedule to catch him and talk to, talk with him. You would find out the truth from him once and for all. Then you would walk. You, then you would talk with Rose and explain that you found out the, about the affair. She would. For, you would forgive her, and she would have to work to gain your trust once more. But she would have to gain. Okay, work to gain your trust once more. Okay. The moment came. The man drove from work to. Intram what? Intramural? Oh, intram. The moment came. The man drove from work to intramural basketball practice and uh, and games Monday through Wednesday, but Thursday he typically met his friends or Rose for an early dinner. You snuck into the parking lot deck where his car sat and waited. 4:35 p.m. on the dot, and you saw the man appear and casually began walking towards the elevator he just ex exited until he passes you. You grab him and pull him into the elevator, slamming him against the back door with the lit metal clanging rang through the small space. What the hell? What exactly do you think you're doing? Slam against the lift's wall again. This turning into a second to press nearly, uh, nearly every door on the elevator's panel. What? What are you doing, asshole? I didn't do anything to you. Okay. The man was scared. You seemed... Oh, you feel a sick sensation of satisfaction. Oh, but you did, sir. Your voice has taken a, on a quite threatening tone. You've been having an affair with my fiancé. Fiancé. You keep him pressed against the wall, waited, uh, oh, waiting quite a... What? Oh, weighing quite a bit more than the man, you are able to easily keep him... Pumped. I have no idea what you're... <gasps> Yeah, that's right, little bitch. Yeah, you're fucking doing it with my fucking fiance, you little bitch. Rose. I'm sorry. She's mine. The hell she is? That is my fiance. What? Are you out of your mind? We've been engaged for nearly a year and a half. Wow. The man tried to push against you, but to no avail. You smile cruelly in his face. You're going to leave her alone, or I will make you suffer. She is my sweet Rose. If I find that you are still hanging out with her and seeing her after tonight, I will find you. And I will kill you. The elevator dings behind you, and you straighten up and step off with a friendly wave. Remember what I said. I'll be watching you. <laughs> That's something Batman would say. Remember what I said. I'll be watching you. Joker. Psycho. The man stares after you. The vision fades as the elevator doors close in the man's form. That didn't answer any of my questions. She was correct. I'm now more confused at the fact that she was his fiance. My fiance was his fiance. Now, I must leave your fate up to you, Chance. Her voice was even more chilling than before, as if she was just accepted, or as if she was. Just as except, except what affected as you were from that vision or from the vision, did the man leave Rose alone? What do you find out in the next room? You stand before the double doors; they open, and you are blinded by a bright light. Oh yes, the bright light. This is a courtroom. What? He's in a courtroom at a large desk. There was a man behind you, oh, beside you, uh, and the knowledge floods back to you. The man beside you is your lawyer. You are dressed in orange, recently admitted to a federal prison awaiting trial. Your trial is today. <coughs> it has already begun. Miss Rose Peterson is currently taking the stand. Miss Peterson, do you swear that all you state will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Fuck's sake, what happened? I do. So solemnly swear. Ah, oh, quit it with your sweet voice, Rose. God. Your sweetest Rose, uh, your sweetest Rose nods uh, to the slightly woman speaking to her. The prosecutor, uh, you can't recall her name, the Rose, and Rose, uh, takes her seat to the stand, as if, as in, as, uh, she's as angelic as ever. Why am I still then so... Then you may proceed. Uh, I'm still so obsessed with her. Miss Peterson, the plaintiff, Mr. Chance Johnson, states that you and he had a personal relationship. Is that correct? No. <laughs> I only met him a handful of times. He huh? gave me his umbrella one day. And then we met for coffee on two separate occasions. That was but the extent of our relationship. That was the extent of our relationship. Oh, bullshit! You sit there nodding with the most polite of smiles on your face. 
Wait. What caused you to file the restraining order on Mr. Johnson? After the first time he had copied, I began to receive letters. They were all extremely disturbing. What? They. That is when I met with him a second time, telling Chance that I was not interested in him, and we would no longer see each other. She handed the dozens of letters to the judge that was silently sitting to her right. Disturbing? What? The letters they, uh, they had, uh, what? The letters they had her handwritten writing on them. <sighs> the letters they had her handwriting on them. That was her handwriting, you were sure of it. The elegant scrawl that made each letter delicately simple. Why did you say you wrote, why, why did she say that you wrote these? She was, she must be frightened, oh, she must be terrified and confused. Why am I still defending her? What is happening? I took out a restraining God. order after I went on a long vacation with my fiancé and he followed us there. Oh. I'm sure that in his apartment are a few of the things that he took from me over that trip. Just a few of the things were... Shoes. My shoes. A necklace. A necklace. Oh. A pair of sunglasses. And a hat. He actually grabbed the necklace from me after cornering me while my fiance went to get some food. That's when we took out the restraining order. What the fuck is happening? God damn it. Rosie began making small choking noises, her eyes glimmering with unshed tears. She wouldn't look at you. And when did you realize that Mr. Johnson had begun to threaten your fiance, Paul Jones? <laughs> We only guessed that we followed him during the day and found out where Paul worked, his scheduled hours, and where Paul parked his car during the day. One afternoon, Mr. Johnson threatened him in the elevator of his parking garage while Paul was heading to his car after work. God damn it, man! Was there ever a time that you thought Mr. What is happening? mentally unstable? Okay. After getting the restraining order, I still received distressing letters in my mail. Mr. Johnson had given me the number to his work the first time we met for coffee. So, I called there in order to find out if he had any emergency contacts I could call. I didn't want to get the police involved. If I could get Mr. Johnson help. From his family. <clears throat> oh man, I'm fucked. She was she wasn't all out crying yet, but uh, oh wait, she wasn't all out crying yet, and you were proud of how strong your beloved was in that moment. I am just insane. That's what I've Where learned. Where did Mr. Johnson work at the time? When I met him, he said he worked in the management and acquisitions department for Barclay and Webb. Oh. I found out that he is the custodian for that department for Oh, wow. He's worked there for 15 years. Wow, this is really turned up on me, huh? So when did you Completely find out that he was mentally unstable? After getting his emergency contact from his work, I was able to call his the brother. The brother that I forgot, yeah. It seems that both of his parents are patients at the mental health clinic downtown. His brother mentioned it. His uh, brother mentioned oh. that this has happened with another woman before. Do you believe that this is the undeniable proof then that Mr. Johnson committed the accused crime against your fiance? Did I kill him? No. She straight. Uh, Rose stared straight at you, tears finally dripping onto uh, onto her cheeks. I do believe that it is undeniable that Mr. Johnson. Oh my God! Oh my fiance. By planting a homemade bomb under his car. Bob, 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 fuck, Bob, Bob, fuck, Boba, fuck. What the fuck? You look over to the to your lawyer, smiling at him. You whisper. This has just been blown out of proportion. She's making it seem much worse than it is, really. It was only a little bit of bomb. A little bit of bomb. What? What the fuck just happened? The white light that surrounds you recedes a bit. Now you know. Oh. Came for the illumination that reveals cloud. What? 
A smooth voice came from the illumination that reveals cloudless skies and green grass. You know that this was Lucifer. He was the last of the seven, and his voice spoke with such power, the memory swirling in your head... Uh, oh god. The memory swirling in your head did not match up. Why? What is wrong with you? After seeing this final memory, the truth has been finally revealed to you. You have been imprisoned for attempting murder upon a man that loves the woman that you obsess over. You were found guilty. Your body is currently sprawled out on a concrete bed. Lifeless. Lifeless. Admitted to the psych ward, you were given solitary confinement. Oh god. You manipulated the doctor into giving you a medication that you knew you were adversely affected by. All to spite Rose. You wanted her to feel sorry for you. To know that she made you take all those pills. But she didn't make you. Did she? She lives with Paul, the man who is now her husband, and she rarely thinks of you. Thinking of you makes her ill, angry, and fearful all at once. All of your life you have caused distress and trouble to those around you. You left your brother alone in the world. You placed fear in the life of a new family. And you have deluded yourself and robbed yourself of happiness. Wow. Still, I'm just... I am here to present you with the choice. I'm just trying to soak this in. Like, this is actually insane. I can't wait to give you guys my, my opinion yeah. about this game. <laughs> Even after all the strife you've caused others, go back to your body and live out the rest of your life in a jumpsuit. Or I can take all this pain away. I can give you eternal peace. What will your choice be? Oh, for... F I want to live again. I will come with you. Okay, so... Those memories... I feel like I'm being manipulated right now by the seven sins. I just... I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking this, but I honestly feel like... I mean, I'm... These are the seven sins. They're not like the seven... Oh, good people. They're the seven sins. And I've feel like uh I feel like I want to live again Lucifer always keeps his promises if going back to your cage is what you wish that is what you shall have shit you feel the darkness take you one last time at last you have the hope that Rose will come visit you while you are in here she loves you after all you've done so much to keep her happy ah wow well, I'm a sick bastard, aren't I? See, normally, I, I, I was gonna say, just kind of, just let it be. Oh, that was the end of the game! Oh! Okay, I thought that was a kind of a, um... A, uh... What do you say it? I guess, uh... A little end cutscene, I guess? But that was it! That was... Seven! Hopefully you guys enjoyed that this game. I honestly this was a really cool game. I really enjoyed it. Um I did finish it one sitting, um but of course it will be edited down into like three or four parts. Um uh but I really enjoyed that. I honestly think this was um a really cool game. This was made in thirty days for a, a for a con for an RPG contest, I think, or something like that. Uh huge Huge props to the guys at Raven Tail Studios for, for making this really, really cool game. I can't wait to see if they have anything else um, in the works, and I would love to check those out whenever that is, whenever they come out. Thank you, thank you to all who made this possible. Uh, but yeah, that was a really good game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, the story was really good. Really, kind of, I felt the 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 reason why I think this game is really good is because of the fact that I, as I was going along this journey, this path. To, uh, going through and meeting all these, um, you know, the seven sins. At first, you know, I was like, I'm lost, and, and then I started was like, okay, uh, I, 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 this woman, I got her number, and I was like, oh, she loves me back, and we're on the like a relationship. My life is good. I have to go back to that life. And then something happened where she's cheating on me, and that's kind of like went down. And then it, it was a roller coaster, and I really like that. I think uh, any game that makes you go through all, all these kind of different emotions is just is is a really good game. So. Um, I 
really enjoyed the game. Thank you guys for the suggestion. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys have any more uh, you know, visual novels that you guys want, to p want me to play, let me know with a comment below. Uh, of course, tweet them at me. Let's wear as, as always, link in the description below. Subscribe if you guys new for awesome videos. Um, uh, probably, you know, whenever a new video goes up, you'll be notified in your sub box. Uh, check out the link in the description below. We'll have the series playlist if you guys missed out on any of the episodes for this series. Thank you guys very much for watching once again. My name is SDSK, and I will see your beautiful face on the flip side.